Welcome to Workshop Topics, Part 11. A quick look at some collets. On the screen at the moment is a really excellent piece of equipment, sent to me by a man called Ron. It's a collet chuck for the ER40 collet system, and it's beautifully made and it's extremely accurate. It screws onto the spindle nose of my Boxford lathe, so any work I put into the collet can go down the middle of the spindle. The item in my hand at the moment is the locking ring for the ER40 collet system. This locking ring is the ball raised type and applies much more pressure to the collet. All you have to do is slot the collet into the ring because the hole is oval and then screw the collet and the locking ring in place on the chuck. Here's a close up of one of the collets and you can see how they work. This collet is tightly pushed into a taper in the chuck which in turn closes the collet. As you can see it's quite a complicated piece of equipment really. I originally bought this ER40 system just to demonstrate it in the videos because I thought it was a good thing for beginners with smaller lathes and a limited budget because really for what they are they're not expensive at all. And now for something completely different, here is a picture of my Smart and Brown Model 1024 lathe. And this is my collet chuck that I would normally use on the Smart and Brown lathe. This doesn't screw onto the spindle, it uses what's called a cam lock system. If I remember rightly, I bought this in about 1995, and it was very expensive, I remember that too. I got it at a reduced price of £500. This collet system, in the same way as the ER40 system, uses multi-sized collets, so you can hold work of a different diameter within a certain tolerance. This, of course, is a piece of industrial equipment. You could use this eight hours a day, every day, and it would be fine. I don't use this collet system that much really because the chuck that's on the smart and brown lathe is very accurate anyway. So I think I'll take this opportunity to clean it and apply some oil. This is not the lubricant that I normally use. This is just some commercial oil just to stop it from rusting. If you like great pieces of engineering, this is a showpiece really. And it's called a Bernard collet chuck. I'll put the spelling on screen to avoid any confusion. Moving off the collet topic for a moment, this is a flywheel for a Stuart model beam engine. And what's unusual about it and not shown on the drawing is it has a keyway cut in it. The taper pin is sheared off in the hole and the other end is just, well, messy. So I thought it would be a good idea to demonstrate the ER40 collet system by making a new shaft. But before I do that, I'm going to find out whether the flywheel runs true on this shaft or if the shaft runs true. So here it is in the collet, and and I didn't expect it to be as untrue as this. This is impossible, something is wrong. To confirm this, I turned the whole thing around in the chuck, and it was still very wobbly. Just for a change, this crankshaft is quite a good fit in the flywheel. So I tapped it out of the flywheel and put the key in a safe place, and here I'm just putting the shaft in the collet chuck. There is definitely a problem here. The chuck that Ron made is perfect. It really checks out with the dial test indicator and everything. And the locking ring is just there to hold the collet into the chuck. I fitted a longer piece of bar and that was still very much out of true. And this was yet another piece of steel bar. This is a brand new piece of mild steel. This is in the collet chuck and as you can see, everything is not running concentrically. The chuck is concentric, but the locking ring and the collet isn't. So what's going on here? The thread in the chuck that fits onto the spindle nose is an absolute perfect fit. It's nearly an interference fit. So just in case I have some metal particles in the chuck and on the collet, I'm giving everything a good clean. Once again, here I'm fitting the collet with the locking ring. The thread on the end of the chuck is perfect, and the thread in the locking ring has a bit of tolerance but it really doesn't matter, its only purpose is to hold the collet into the taper. A health and safety warning, if you're doing what I'm doing here, tightening the collet chuck by hand, be careful that you don't lacerate the palm of your hand on the piece of steel sticking out of the chuck. I didn't, but I thought it was a good idea to warn you about it. With the spindle lock button held in place, I've tightened the collar onto the chuck. And as you can see, everything's running rather well. I've slowed the video down to see what's happening. So what can I tell from this shot? Well, the chuck is fairly concentric. The ring is okay, but the piece of metal sticking out of the end is moving disproportionately 
to the other two items. I thought it would be a good idea to refit the three jaw chuck to the Boxford and spin up the flywheel and shaft. And as you can see clearly from this clip, it runs OK. I'll be doing some more testing to find out what the cause of the problem is. And if any viewers have come across a similar problem, please let me know. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.